This week on the Ritual Misery podcast, college sucks. Ah, uh, but not if you're trying to brew at a new pub. Uh, trying out a new brew is a lot better than trying out new appliances, in my opinion. Uh, <laughs> you're not wrong. That's like an appliance black hole. Uh, all this and Thanksgiving talk. There we go. That's what I was waiting for. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 235 for Thursday, the 5th of December, 2019. This is a show where two lifelong friends about uh, celebrate all things geek. Uh, I'm Amos, that's Kent, and if you're new here, uh, so are we, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Man, it only took us 235 episodes to screw it up yet again. <laughs> <laughs> it only took us 235 episodes to screw it up 230 times. <laughs> yeah, uh, we're, we've we're, had about five smooth shows. Yeah, we're we're in the club now, man. We're uh, it's it's money. Um, hey, dude. Uh, so we are doing a late show tonight. We started out about an hour late, uh, hour ish late, uh, because I went and got my TSA pre check done today. Uh, what do you mean you got it done? What well, you got to go and apply for that shit, and you got to show up and give them fingerprints and everything else, and all do all the stuff. See, you don't have to because you still have a military ID card. I oh, um, you don't keep your DOD ID number. You do. Forever? It doesn't work anymore. <laughs> oh, I did not know that. Yes, I discovered this in the last uh, couple weeks be- of traveling. That should be a veteran's privilege. Your DOD ID should be added to your your retirement ID. It is on the ID. It just doesn't work for TSA PreCheck anymore. What the hell? Yeah, see, I'm discovering shit for you, and you've been retired four years longer than I have. Yeah, but I, like you said, I, I still have mine because right. I'm in civil service now, right. so it's... It was like a smooth transition for me. No, 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 not so much. Uh, um, so anyway, uh, we our fridge arrived yesterday. We got all new all our new appliances this weekend. It took me all day s- Friday, Friday, Friday to no Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. <coughs> it took all day Sunday for me to get the, the get the stove, the microwave, and the dishwasher set up and installed. Hmm. That was that was my Sunday period. That's yeah. That does not sound like fun, dude. It it wasn't bad. Uh, crawling under the sink to get the dishwasher hooked up kind of hurt my back a little bit because mm. I think I think I pulled a muscle or some shit. But anyway, fridge came yesterday. Had to separate the shipments because fridge came late. Because as we talked about, the fridge blah 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 blah. Um, the fridge was the one thing that was in store when I bought it, and they sold the model. And then anyway, um, fridge came yesterday. So now we had two fridges. We're ge- keeping the the new the old new fridge and we're taking it downstairs so i went to u-haul or not to u-haul to home depot and got a appliance dolly mm-hmm. we we're going to take it out the front door down the side hill of the house to the basement level and bring it in the back door we get all the way down there to clean the snow out of the way and everything else and it's too fucking big so i go to take the back door it's a sliding door I'd go to take it off its rail and set it to the side the ca- the casters on the bottom of the door don't allow it to slide off the rail without removing the casters from the side. That sounded like a whole heap of what the fuck. So instead of risking leaving a gaping wide open hole in the house with <laughs> zero degree temperatures, uh, I decided to take the doors off the fridge. Yes. Okay. Sounds much easier. Yes. Much- it, it- it probably was a lot more time consuming, but you know, probably easier and much. If if I fucked it up, then guess what? The fridge just stays outside for overnight. Who cares? Right, right. <laughs> Nobody's gonna steal a doorless fridge. I mean, come on. <laughs> I mean, probably. Not. I mean, some neighborhoods probably, but right. uh, not not here. I, I, get yeah. too, I get too many cameras in my house. Um, <laughs> I say that and I'll get robbed tonight. Fuck. Right. <laughs> Uh, I, I cleaned out, but I I got video of it. Yeah. <laughs> as soon as we find the thieves, we're gonna get that footage back too. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Um. So I did all that and got it inside. I didn't even reassemble it once I got it inside. I just got it inside, took the dolly, uh, the hand truck thing back to Home Depot. Then I headed downtown to my appointment. Appointment is two fifty. I got in there at three o'clock because traffic in Anchorage, people don't know how to drive on snow, which still fucks my mind up. 
Um, the the appointment was only ten minutes long, so I got out of there before I was supposed to pick my wife up and bring her home from work. So she made the mistake of sending me to Costco to pick up some some things for the house. Okay. So I go into Costco and I do a circle. I I go I come in through the electronics because that's how you have to come in. I go down. I pick up uh, uh, toilet paper and um, paper towels, and I come back this way. Pick up cereal and some vitamins, and I'm done. Mm-hmm. That took 45 minutes. Oh no! I didn't browse. That's just how crowded the place was. And the water, of course, the thing that she sent me there for is way in the back. Mm-hmm. Um, so by the time I got back to my wife, we started heading back into Wasilla. Autumn had a train ride today as a field trip. The train ar- arrives was supposed to arrive at 6.20 this evening. Well, the plan originally was for me to come home. Then my wife would leave from the house, go pick up Autumn and come home. Because that's usually when we're on the show. No problem. We got back into town right at 6.00. I was worried with the traffic that if we came home and then she left, she wouldn't get to the train before 620 Mm -hmm. because of traffic. So we went straight there. We actually got to the train station at 610. Perfect time. The train didn't get there until 640. Oh, God. So then now we're in a mad rush to get Autumn off the train and into the truck so we can hurry up and get home so I can get on the show. (laughs) So the thing we were trying to avoid, we ended up doing anyway, which is me rushing here at the last second to boot the computer and get everything going. Should have known that was going to happen, though, because this morning, th- dropping Autumn off at the bus or at the train, she was supposed to get on the train at 9.30 at the very latest. Like, that's when it was supposed to be pulling away. It didn't arrive until 9.40. So we were all standing out there freezing our asses off with, like, negative 10-degree wind chill, waiting because there's no shelter or anything because nobody ever used that bu- that train station. It didn't actually leave until like 10.01. Oh, wow. So stupid. So anyway, that wow. was that was my day today, and that is why we are doing the show late. Yeah, yeah, man. Um, so <laughs> speaking of doing things late, um, uh, drinking alcohol for the first time at 23 years old. Huh? Yeah. So <laughs> I, I tried out a new brew pub that opened up a couple weeks ago. Um I tried it out this weekend. It was uh, Saturday, I think. Now, when you say brew pub, this is like a microbrew that also has a front front facing bar. Um, yes, it is. It is a bar, but I'm I'm specifically calling it a brew pub because they don't have liquor. It is beer and wine only. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. No, that that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. So I guess because liquor beer. licenses in your town are dumb. Yeah. They're incredibly expensive and there's only like a couple of them that are even available and it's it's ridiculous fucking churchies yep um <laughs> so anyway uh cool place uh, pretty good beers mm-hmm. uh, lots of variety on on tap uh, i have nothing bad to say about the place uh, we we ended up drinking with um with a group of people and one of them uh was this 23 year old girl that had drank alcohol literally for the first time in her life on Thanksgiving. Oh, wow. Two days prior <laughs> to, to the day that, that we were drinking at this brew pub. So it must have gone well. Uh, I I had a good time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, her first time drinking alcohol must have gone well if she's back two days later. Um, no, actually, the, according to her stories, she was pretty well destroyed and throwing up everywhere, and um, it was... Pretty bad experience. And then... Um, was she drinking that, when you went up there? She decided to go at it again two so, days later. So, yeah, it must have worked out pretty good. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, my God. So uh, she was drinking things way too fast, right? So it was it was like, okay, you know, I'll have a beer or whatever. And then she'll get something, and then she'll just, like, down it. Like, man, that's good. And I'm like, somebody needs to tell that girl to, like, first of all, slow down, but also, like, drink water. Like for every drink, <laughs> drink two glasses of water. Um, and somebody told me, well, no, I mean, she's a grown ass woman. She can do what she wants. I was like, she drank for the first time on Thursday, literally. <laughs> um, yeah, so that was that was fun watching that. That, that uh, That's, hmm. <laughs> not sure. You, I, I'm not sure I agree with hardly any of that, but. Yeah, yeah, but. Luckily, I mean, she was with good 
people and uh, she got home safe. So, ah, uh, okay. Well, I mean, that, that works. That helps at least. <laughs> um, did they have um, Alaskan uh, uh, amber? No. Um, th- okay, so, okay, okay. Did they have uh, Dos, e- Dos Equis amber? No. Everything uh, was locally brewed. Local, local brews. Did, did they have a good amber? They might have. I didn't try the amber. I drank IPAs and stouts. I did uh, two flights of five like sample size beers you're, each. You're so killing me right now, dude. Yeah, I well, I so you, I had, did t- you had ten chances to get an amber and you didn't. Correct. The yeah, fuck? I, had like, Scottish, I had a Scottish ale. That's probably about as close to an amber as I had. Tonight. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> All right. Well, screw you, hippie. <laughs> um, we've been doing a lot of uh, a lot of college searches. Um, are you are you going back to school? No, no, the twins are though. Oh my, it's that time. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. We uh, we went to Flagstaff. Did I tell you about that? Or was that the week before Thanksgiving? We didn't do a show on Thanksgiving. Like, yeah, I knew it was happening, but I didn't hear any stories. Okay, uh, well, there are not a whole lot of stories to tell. We got out of there just before they got forty one inches of snow. So. Um, so my mom, my aunt Paul and Uncle Bob, they live about an hour, hour and a half away from where the twins might be going to school. Um, and then, of course, this week, they, they're all stressing about that and everything else. They can't figure out where they want to go. They, if they go to NAU, they might, might not be able to play soccer because uh, they're so late in the process, blah, 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 blah. Then they get a scholarship with uh, spots on the team for Tacoma Community College, mm. which is easy for us because... We can always catch a flight from Anchorage to Seattle. Mm-hmm. That's easy peasy, you know. Um, so yeah, it, it's just man. This is why I had no in- th- this specifically is why I had no interest in going to college when I graduated high school. It's just a morass of fucking paperwork, application fees. No one knows all the rules. No one tells you anything. And if your parents didn't go to college or they don't know anything about college, you have zero chance unless you happen to have one of the three guidance counselors in the fucking country that know what they're talking about and are willing to help. Yeah, yeah. And that's none of that was at Benton Central. Correct, yeah. But, hey, we had Air Force recruiter. Hmm. <laughs> yep. He was interested in helping us. Yeah, he he did. I mean, I can't complain anymore. Right, yeah. I still do, yeah. but I shouldn't. Yeah. Um, I've actually, I've, I've thought about taking classes again. Um, I'm about halfway through my, um, um, eligibility period for using my GI bill mm. and, uh, yeah. man, that happened fast. Uh, <laughs> yeah. he needs those benefits. Yeah. Yep. 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 So I'm with you. All right, man. Uh, so you've been surfing the YouTube. You've been finally falling down the black hole of YouTube that I usually tell you all about. Yeah, man, I was just clicking around on on YouTube and I uh, found this channel called Star Wars Theory, and uh, it's this super Star Wars fan that he posts a new video every single day, and it's always some topic. I mean, he's got to fill time because he posts a new video every day. Jeez. Um, most of his videos aren't about theories, which my theory about this channel is that it started because he wants to talk about his crazy Star Wars theories. Um. <laughs> So, but I was scrolling through. I was watching video theories okay. upon theories, huh? Well, I finally, I finally came upon a video that was a Star Wars theory. It wasn't his theory though. He was reacting to theories that he'd been reading on Reddit. Ah. But this one's a doozy. Oh. Ray is Shmi. Huh? So, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So, you know, there's all this this uh, talk about, you know, oh, Ray's probably Luke's daughter or, oh, it's probably Leia's daughter or, or oh, no, it's Obi-Wan Kenobi's granddaughter, you know, or whatever, right? Or none uh, of those. Yeah, or none of those, right? Um, but the, it, you know, the jury's still out on, on exactly who she is. She was told that she was nobody, the the, the daughter of, of junk, uh, like uh, like drunk junk traders or whatever on, on Jakku and... Um, yeah, that might be true. It didn't sound like it was true. I don't know. Who knows? Um, we're probably going to find out here in about two weeks, though. <laughs> that's my that's my number one theory is that we're going to find out in two weeks. 
Uh, uh, I, I was I was gonna I was gonna take you take that bet, but I oh, it's just so much of a stretch. <laughs> uh, but for for those to include you, Amos, I think um, that has never watched Rebels, the animated Star Wars show that that wrapped up like a year or so ago. You are uh, correct. There was a storyline where they introduced a concept called the world between worlds. Um, which in a kind of weird way sort of kind of introduced time travel to Star Wars, uh, where it, like you could visit other times through the Force. It's like this, like, you more or less enter the time stream, kind of, and you can see, like, you know, the past and the future and things like that. Uh, basically takes one of the concepts of, like, using the Force and, and like, make, like, makes it tangible is basically what it is. Gotcha. Okay. And, um, so somebody is using that as kind of the backbone of their theory that, um, so the world between worlds, Emperor Palpatine, Darth Sidious, uh, was using it to try to like, uh, you know, gain advantage and, you know, sp spread his evil through the future and everything else. Right. And so the theory goes that he glimpsed into the future, like 70 years or whatever it would be mm -hmm. and sees Ray and oh my god it's like the the most powerful force user in existence i need to use her for my plans so he basically like kidnaps her so this will happen in episode 9 he comes to the future because we know palpatine's in this movie yes so the theory goes that he comes into the future through the world between worlds and takes ray like kidnaps her basically and brings her back to his time like 70 years prior and she uses a method uh, that Luke taught her in episode eight to close herself off from the force to basically protect herself from Palpatine. And she goes into hiding on Tatooine and like forgets who she is. And she ends up pregnant with Anakin. And yeah, <laughs> it's highly entertaining watching him dissect this theory and give his thoughts. Uh, spoiler alert, he does not subscribe to this theory. <laughs> it's pretty entertaining. Check him out. Star Wars Theory on YouTube. It's it's good stuff. If you like Star Wars, I think you like his videos. So I I have seen a few theories. Um, after watching the big recap that I, that we, we talked about last time during one of the little post shows a couple of episodes ago, mm -hmm. it's like a 41 minute, everything canon, the, every major event that happened in canon Star Wars or something like that. Right. I've formed an opinion of what I thought might happen. And then I've seen a few theories, um, that coincide with that, which gives me good vibes that that might actually happen, which is why knowing that you don't like to be spoiled on anything and I've watched way more of these than you have. I'm not saying shit about it, but if it happens, I, uh, if it happens the way I think it's going to happen with, with over a 50% uh, uh, reliability, I will give you just a thumbs up after we watch <laughs> it. Cause I'm not going to even try to, it, it has to do with, with Palpatine and, I ex I will say that I expect to see Palpatine in episode nine, not just hear him, not see, not, like actually see Palpatine. Right, right. Like in physical form, the original, not like a clone. Like, yeah. Like that, that, I, that, that's as far as I will go because any further than that, and it, it end up maybe being spoilery or just making me look stupid. <laughs> um, one of those I'm okay with, one of those I'm not. So I'm, I'm just going to leave it at that. Yeah, either way, man, I cannot wait for this movie. I am getting so stoked. Yeah. They're releasing almost daily now. They're releasing new little TV spots on the on the Star Wars YouTube channel. Yep. And uh oh my god, like each one is mo like probably 90% just rehashed stuff they've shown us already, but then each, there's just Each one has like one one flash of something new. Yeah, and oh my god, dude, yeah. I am like at peak hype for this movie. <laughs> I cannot wait. Um do you, do you have your ticket? No, because my dumbass theater only sells tickets a week in advance. Okay, so I am waiting to buy my ticket until you buy your ticket. Oh God! Because okay. I have several theaters that I can choose from. Once you buy your uh, ticket, so are we going to synchronize our watching? To, that uh, that would be ideal. Yes. 
Okay. Because again, I'm, I would love to do a, a um, instantaneous recap immediately afterwards. And if we can tie that in with Sean, then uh, uh, Squidicus or I am Squidicus, uh, he would like to be part of that. Uh, we might even like do as uh, as an open invite for patrons on the old uh, Discord. Um, that sounds like a plan, dude. Because that's yeah. that's going to be on Ritual Misery Night anyway. Um, assuming that I can get Thursday tickets. Right. So we'll do uh, we'll do Ritual Misery. We'll go and see the movie. Um. Maybe depending on timing, because that's right. Because you got to remember the time that it is. Well, for Squid's me. ticket is like t- midnight ten on Friday morning, I think. Oh, okay, all right. Well, so. we'll we'll figure that out. Uh, so you know, pay attention to Star or er, Star Jesus, not Star Wars Twitter, Ritual Misery Twitter. Yep, <laughs> It'd be awesome if Star Wars Twitter said, "Hey, check out Ritual Misery's <laughs> recap." <laughs> I mean, we do. We we are we are. Very few degrees of separation away from some very prominent people in the Star Wars universe, like the Star Wars that's, production universe. Yeah, that's yeah that that's an accurate statement. Like um, two degrees, another, one degree. How does how does it count? I, like I, how many degrees of separation am I from you? Zero. I think. Or am one. I one? I think you're zero from yourself, and then one degree separated from me. <laughs> so, Will Will says uh, everyone knows that Ritual Misery is a Star Wars fan theory account. Yeah, to a uh, point. But we're, not, but, but we're not announcing that until after episode nine, <laughs> right? Like, stop, um, stop blowing the load. So, <laughs> <laughs> one one big reason that I'm looking forward to episode nine coming out is that uh, we're finally going to get some money in the draft. That would be fantastic. Let's hear from Big Voice Jay on just how fucking broke we are so far in the draft. If it plays. Welcome to your Blue League Movie Draft Minute, presented by DiamondClub.tv. For the week of December 2nd, 2019, I'm your host, Big Voice Jay. Let's take a moment and thank the true heroes of the year. Our delivery drivers. Let's go to the scoreboard. Team RMP's in last place with $6.5 million. Team Gelf is in fifth place with $70.3 million. Team Snowshoes in fourth place with $99.9 million. Team Geek Grills is in third place with $253.5 million. Team Abba Drinks in second place with $358.7 million. And in first place with $545.8 million, it's Team DKG. Last year's Dream Team Movie Draft Minute. For up to date listings, Follow Stream Team Draft on Twitter. Hey man, I got bad news, dude. Uh huh. Team DKG almost has as much money as we expected from our premiere movie. Yeah. <laughs> Might as well be our only movie because uh, the other two aren't going to make shit. Yeah, no. Uh, do we think it'll make 600 million? Yes. I think it'll make six hundred million. I don't yeah, know how much beyond that. It, 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 all all of the, after that depends on first day hype. Yeah, uh, but DKG still has bad boys, so and that's that's gonna make one hundred and fifty. We we might even end up in third here, depending on how long the legs. How many fucking but, times are we gonna end up in third or second place on this shit? Yeah, I know, man. Like we always finish top half, but never top. Yeah, I wonder how how long Frozen Two is going to continue to make money because that's going to be that's going to be the factor for Have a Drink because they they've got two more movies after this. Yeah, um, but they're not going to make much with those. Playmobil is probably going to make less than than whatever piece of shit movie that we had come out already. <laughs> Jexy, like Playmobil is going to make no money. I for, I, for, I forgot I forgot all about Jexy. <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah. I, I seriously, Nobody, seriously just considered they give they gave us like a six million dollar just front advance on Star Wars. You, you know why the rest of the world? You know why the rest of the world didn't forget about Jexy? Because they'd never heard of it in the first place. <laughs> so you're not wrong. You're not wrong. Yeah. So all of our hopes and dreams lie with Episode Nine. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It, it kind of really does. Um, we were hoping to avoid that, and we and we we got game theoried out of we we got out game theoried is what happened. We were yeah, well, Joker happened. That's that's what happened. 
Well, not. I mean, just during the draft itself, like we were hoping for some, something to happen, and that happened, and then it still didn't work out the way we wanted to, because the dollar amounts weren't close with any of the other teams. Mm. We had one team that had a huge amount of money still in reserve that could bump up the price for Star Wars on us. To a point, yeah. yeah. Um, it was just they outbid us for the leftovers. That's that's really what got us. Yeah. Um. So we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Um, if you would like to help us get to the movies and watch more movies, you can cruise on over to patreon.com slash ritual misery, where we have just switched to a monthly pledge. Um, yeah, man. Um, it, it's a much, <clears throat> excuse me. It's a much better pay scale here. I think, um, I think patrons will enjoy giving us a buck a month better than a buck a creation because it's inconsistent. Because sometimes we're four creations a month, sometimes we're two creations a month, sometimes we're six creations a month, and it's just kind of all over the place and unpredictable. Uh, this way, you can select your tier, and you're sure to have the the same amount come out every time. Um, it works out better for everybody, I think. And if you become a patron, you get access to pre shows and post shows and exclusive interviews and all kinds of cool stuff. Um, check it out, guys. Patreon.com slash Ritual Misery. Here's the other thing that, that this has done. Now, mm. instead of so, instead of helping out with a, a couple a couple bucks here or there, people are like, they've started increasing their amounts to where it's like a, a nicer chunk for us, which is really what we were hoping for. Which that, that's actually really perfect. We don't have to worry about publishing too much and costing you more than you expected. And you don't have to worry about, like, no, that's, that's what you don't have to worry about. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, you don't have, anyway, uh, it, it's really nice. It works out. Um, we had someone finally hit our $10 tier cause we didn't, I didn't change the tiers at all. When I redid it, I was like, you know, those, t I changed the goals. I changed some of the goals. Um, but I didn't change the tiers and now we have a $10 person, uh, one, one, one each, each, uh, and that's the excluvians, which means we now owe our $10 patron by the end of this month. Cause that's the deal. An exclusive just for them. Okay. Um, also, by the end of the month, because that's the deal, we have a $15, which is, we call them uh, uh, Disco Lights, because they get <laughs> discounts. Whoop, 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 whoop. Disco Lights. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We don't, we don't sell Disco Lights. So we owe the <laughs> God, I love fucking with you, Kent. I, um, I stream cut out. I know, I know you did, and it was perfect. It worked because I could actually hold hold myself still that long. Um <laughs> we owe them discounts on swag. Which means one, we need to put out some better swag that they actually might want, and two, I yep. gotta figure out how to discount that shit for them. So well, get on it, Patreon man. Uh, yeah, no, that's that's what's, <laughs> that's and, and merch man. Fuck yes. Like the only thing I'm not responsible for is guests. And yep. and the game, I do the game. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say in the in the game, which is like what everybody comes in tunes in for in the first place. Which, by the <laughs> way, it's about it time we got <laughs> to the game. Can I please have your attention? In the last 30 minutes, Kent's done something. Now you've got a guess. He was very excited. Kent's Games. Play with him. Play with him. Play with him. This week's game is called Thanks or No Thanks. Oh. And, it, and it's not the game where we're going to keep score. This is a game where, um, I mean, you, I guess you could win or lose, um, but we're going to let the audience decide <laughs> if it was a, a, a winner or not. Okay. Uh, Are we both I, playing this, or is it just me? Well, um, I'm going to present to you. You're going to give your answer, and then uh, I will chime in my thoughts after that. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to present you a scenario. If you like that scenario mm -hmm. and you're good with it, mm -hmm. you're going to say thanks. If you're not good with it, you're going to say no thanks. Now, is there additional shit that's going to come after my answer? Like, you're going to be like, oh... You, I mean, have, there's you, no have, you have dinner at your aunt's house. You're like, yeah, thanks. And then you're like, oh, but your aunt's been dead 10 years. Ah. Uh, mm. Is it one Actually, of those? Is it one of those like, 
Yeah, I, it was one of those gotchas. <laughs> it could be. You know what? I, I, I'm going to experiment with that here on the first one and see see how this goes. Damn it. Because uh, there's two parts to to what I present to you. Okay. And, and um, so what, I, what I'll do for the first one, just see how it goes. I'll present you the first part. You say thanks or no thanks, and then I'll give you the second part. Gotcha. And you can modify your answer. Um, it's this is kind of inspired by uh, "Would You Rather," except it's just a, it's basically just a yes or no. Hmm. Okay, so here we go. This is your first one. So it's more uh, of a "Would you?" <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically, yeah. All right, so you are given a million dollars. No thanks. <laughs> no thanks. You don't want a million dollars. <laughs> You know the kind of taxes you got to pay on that shit? And then, then I got my wife wondering how the fuck I got a million dollars just given to me. Like, and All you, right, you so know I'm just going to buy weed and podcast stuff with it. So tax-free, just handed to you a million dollars, but every penny spent is publicly audited in real time. So the world sees Ooh. everything that you spend it on. Oh, no, I would totally get that. Like, if, that, if that's the hiccup, yeah, I would totally do that. Okay, so that's a thanks for you. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. Totally thanks. All right. Okay. All right, so I think I'm just going to – I think for the next one, I'm going to just read the entire thing. Mm-hmm. And, uh, we'll see how that one goes. Oh, yeah. All right. You are the best musician that ever lived, but you are deaf. No, thanks. No? No. Not a even, chance. Even, even though you could bring just joy and art – to the world, I I wouldn't be able to hear my daughter say "daddy" again. Like no. Oh Jesus, that's a good point. That is a fucking good point that I didn't even think about. That's my my literally my favorite thing to hear. I would <clears throat> never be able to hear again. No. Yeah. Okay. Well. All right. Yep. I I agree totally with that assessment. All right. Um, you can read anyone's mind, but your SO can read yours. Mm. You can read anyone's mind, including hers, but she can read yours. Yes. Uh, thanks. So, thanks. Thanks. You would take that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. okay. Um, because, one, if I could read her mind as well, then I could know exactly what she's thinking so I could counteract anything and two if i could read everyone's mind my my mind would be so busy all the time she wouldn't be able to get shit out of it (sighs) and three i don't i don't really think that my thoughts are so awful that she'd be angry she'd probably just be like god he's so stupid (laughs) like it, it wouldn't be like i have bad thoughts that she'd be mad about she would just be disappointed in the in the lack of intelligence in most of my thinking that's a good segue actually to the next one (laughs) you are the smartest person on the planet but everyone thinks you're stupid and dismisses you yeah i'm good with that yeah thanks i appreciate that (laughs) yeah i'm okay with that what what would you do with your intelligence like how what good is it if, if your idea no one will listen to your ideas if I was the most intelligent person on the planet, I wouldn't need other people per se. I could start out with a very small amount of money, like the $14 I have in my wallet, and turn that into a greater sum. And then money buys you sh- loyalty. Even if they don't believe in you, money buys you loyalty, a.k.a. Trump. So it wouldn't matter that they believed me or not. I could still not only make my life better, my family's life better, but make the world a little bit better because I'd know how to do all the things that I needed to do in order to get to the point where I could, didn't care. Fair point. Fair point. Okay. All right. Um, you get a free automobile to include insurance and fuel and all of that, all expenses that go into it mm-hmm. forever. Okay. And it's oh, your choice. Uh huh. Automobile, right? Not, not, we're not talking airplanes or anything. This is cars. Right. Right. But you can only go half the speed limit. Like literally forever. You would totally take this because it's free and you could cut out like six bills. I would not. You would not. So I no would thanks. not. No, no thanks. No, not a <laughs> chance. Fuck off. 
<laughs> yeah, that one would be a hard one. For now, me. I I am hard. not I'm but. not a speed demon. Like I go exactly the speed limit everywhere. Right, but not I, half the speed limit. No, no, because you're just gonna you're gonna you're gonna die. If you're on the the high like the highway is like typically sixty miles an hour. Like right. A, just imagine going thirty. No, you, you, you go any faster. You're gonna die. <laughs> like forever only matters if you're fucking alive. Right. Yeah. 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 I. You know. I think I would. Yeah. My answer would be to say I would say no thanks to that one. <laughs> it sounds really good. But you'd have you would have to think about it long a lot longer than I did though. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't decide for sure until you actually gave your. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <clears throat> All right. All right. So every other day. Mm. So today, yes. Tomorrow, no. Mm-hmm. Next day. Every other day, you are a beautiful, perfect 10. But the other half of the time, you are a total horror show. Oh, yeah. Yes, please. Yes. Thanks. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Because I feel like I'm a total horror show every day now so that's like a fa- <laughs> no. that's like a total improvement no 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 see i i knew that you would be you would say something like that because of your self deprecative de- deprecative de- deprecative what's the word uh personality however when i say total horror show i mean so like you were talking about going to costco today you were able to be seen in public and nobody was like throwing up like I'm talking horror show to the point where like people cannot stand to look at you. You are an absolute fucking terror to behold. It's still a yes. Still a yes. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> now I now I've got every other day I can just go out and do shit. And nobody would be able to fucking remember what I look like because they couldn't describe me because they're too busy throwing up. <laughs> like both and 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 if they wouldn't if he tried to catch me i would just have to hide for like one day and then all of a sudden i'm like super fucking brad pitt hot and i'd be like no like you're not gonna forget this face <laughs> all right like fuck it yeah yeah, yeah I, I, don't, I don't i think it would be a no thanks for me oh oh no i only get laid every other day <laughs> well that's a fair point too that be a step up i think just <laughs> funny <laughs> like, uh, um, but still, but still, like, I, I, I want to be able to just, yeah, okay. <sighs> All right, next one. <laughs> you never have to piss or shit. Okay. Except for one day a year, you have to do both all day, like literally for 24 hours. That is all that you're doing. It really depends on if I can plan the day or if the day is set or if it's just like randomized like a fucking piss test. I think it'd probably be like, um, oh, damn, I'm starting my period. Right. But if I could plan that for like April 5th every year. But you can't, though. I mean, I mean, that's 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 the condition. It's like. They don't have I like mean, a shit pill that I can time my stuff for the pool I mean, party. You kind of know that okay, it's it it usually happens in the spring. Yeah, <laughs> but it's gonna be a surprise. Like you don't know the day and the hour that it begins. Yeah, I'm still good with it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I sp- I I spend anywhere between ten and thirty minutes a day, once to twice a day shitting. <laughs> that is a lot of time I'd be able to get back. Plus. The frustration of like, you know, you're halfway down the highway, there's nowhere to stop for another 30 miles, and you're like, I got a shit. <laughs> I no longer give a shit if the old lady in front of me is going fucking 30. I'm going to run her over. Like, that's just how that works. Bad weave in the chat says, some days a good shit is the best part of my day. <laughs> See? That's fair, too. And how many times have you been like about to get laid, and you're like, I got to piss? Yeah, yeah. Uh, or... That would be a terrible day, though. Like, when it when it begins. So first of all, you're like driving to work or something when it begins. So you gotta immediately like turn the car around. No, you wouldn't be going to work with something like that going on. You could file for disability and call it a fucking day. <laughs> like, if nothing else, you're getting a sick day that day, guaranteed. Any fucking union is gonna give you a sick day for that day. Yeah, but your but your car that you got for free. 
Or, or no, I guess we didn't get the car. No, we? we didn't get the car for free. <laughs> but, so therefore, you, the car that you paid for is going to be full of shit by the time you get back to the house. Think of every time you took a break from work, it was your time, not your body's time. Think about it. You could win the game of don't shit at work every day for like perpetuity. Yeah. <laughs> but you win no matter what in that game. Right. What if it at work and you run to the toilet. Like you're kind of stuck there. You're still winning because They're think a- of all the shit breaks you didn't take. They're like, fuck it. Uh, he's good, man. He, he never takes a fucking shit break. <laughs> Like all right, all right. So that's a that's a thanks for you. It, it, yeah, think think about it. There are women that have problems several days a week for you know every every few weeks. You know, so several days a month, every few. You know, if, if they can deal with that shit, I can deal with one day a year where I'm just completely incapable of any kind of functioning. You know, like I I just don't see the downside. Yeah, your asshole's raw for a couple weeks afterwards, but. <laughs> <laughs> but then you can completely fucking ignore it for like 12 months. Yeah, ish. <laughs> I mean, you don't even have to really scrub it that much anymore. It's like, oh, well, whatever sweat piled up in there, you don't have to worry about anything else. Like, it's mm. like, yeah, fuck it. Yeah, totally, totally. Thing of the past. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, especially if you're like me and you got the, got the hemorrhoids. Fuck yeah. Give me a day where I only shit once or give me a year where I only shit once. I'm good. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. God, All right. Have you ever had hemorrhoids of the worst? Yeah, no. Um, all right, your next scenario. You become supreme leader of Earth the day before the aliens invade. Mm. I don't... I wouldn't want to be supreme leader of Earth even if the aliens weren't going to invade, so that's a no thanks for me. <laughs> Okay, that's what I suspected your no. answer would be. It was either going to be that or fuck it, bring it on. Like, I'm in charge of the entire world's military no. now. No, nope, nope. Uh, there's so many reasons I don't. I... <sighs> no. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> nope. All right, this, I like this next one. I, I, I could be president of one country for one term. Like, if I was elected president, like, if it just randomly fucking happened, if I won, won the Hunger Games and suddenly became president for one term, I wouldn't even try again. I'd be like, okay, well, that was my turn, man. I'm out. Yeah, I did I did my my duty. Yeah, I did my best. Yep. All right. Your next scenario. You can fly, but birds will attack you on sight. Oh yeah, totally. Like yeah, there's yeah, a yes, bounty. please. Yes, please. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm yep, yep. <laughs> How would you <laughs> so like literally you if you floated five feet off the ground, like birds are coming out of trees to Come after you, right? But you wouldn't need to use it all the time. <laughs> Can you imagine, like Superman, though? like, like bird, like, oh, there he is! Come on, guys. Let's face it, Superman <laughs> used flying as a fucking crutch. Like he was always like, oh, well, I don't need to hurry up. I can just fly there and save all the time and catch the airplane in the middle of the Leve- blah, blah blah. Yeah. Anyway, so I don't like Superman. I don't. I would take the ability to fly even if birds were going to attack me anytime I was in the air. Yep. All right. Fair enough. Especially you didn't you didn't put any constraints on how fast you could fly. Like I would just fucking zoom zoom everywhere. Mm, mm. I'd map my shit out on a fucking globe and just haul ass in that direction until I got there. Fuck you, okay. birds. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, All right. uh, other than photography, I got no use for birds anyway. Fuck birds. Yeah. They're pretty to look at. Other than that, things suck. Yeah. All right. You are the world's greatest chef, but you can't taste anything that you cook. Fuck off. No, thanks. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No. I mean, you like, can like, still taste food, just not the food that you make. All right. That's legit. I'll do that. Yeah. You'll do, oh, you're yep, changing. Yep. Answer. Yep. Thanks. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Let's do that. Okay. Because um, I, I live in a house of eight other people. I rarely get to taste the shit I cook anyway. So, like, it's really no big loss. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, how good is your food? <laughs> True. I mean, that's that's not untrue. However, if I was the greatest chef alive, then other chefs would want to give me, like, trade me food. Uh, 
Okay. So maybe I can't make fucking French fries like Gordon Ramsay. But you know what I can do? I can make something that he can't make and then have him make me French fries in return. Fuck it. Yeah. Yeah, I'll take that. Yep, let's go. Very good point. All right. Yep. So you ended up with seven thanks and three no thanks. Yeah, because I'm, I'm, I'm kind of a crazy dude. So um, you seem like uh, you were pretty thankful. Yeah. Yeah. Which, I, 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 yeah. 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 Well, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> Which was my poor attempt at segueing into our next segment. No, I noticed that, but it was so poor I couldn't like follow it up. It was like. Was, the door was creaking open, and I was like rushed up to it, and I was like, "Oh shit, yeah!" And then I realized it's only creaking up like one degree every minute. <laughs> like fuck. Okay, I'm just no. All right. So uh, last week was Thanksgiving. We didn't do a show. We never do a show on Thanksgiving. I don't think we've ever done a show on Thanksgiving. I, I was supposed so. to do a stream, but that didn't quite work out either because I was celebrating our brand new tradition, which we'll get to in a minute. But uh, Kent asked me what ideas I had for the show, and I was like, you know, Thanksgiving. And he was like, well, any particular ideas? And I was like, nah, not really. And then I came up with, oh, you know what? You know what's really cool? How about we talk about old traditions versus new traditions? The things that we were we, we celebrated and how we celebrated Thanksgiving when we were little versus how we do it now as adults. And yeah. add to that the fact that both Kent and I have been divorced, which changes things immeasurably. Yeah, yeah. So th there's basically three phases of my Thanksgiving experience. Um, when I was a kid, we always went to Grandma's house, mm -hmm. and uh, that's when the entire family went to Grandma's house. Like the whole extended family. Yeah, like yep. even if it wasn't their grandma, like it was either their parent, <laughs> grandparent, aunt, cousin, fourth cousin, twice sibling. removed. Yeah, we all went to my Grandma's house, mm -hmm. and um, for us, it was Aunt Debbie and Uncle Al. Yep. Yeah, and um, uh, football was always on. Yep. Uh, lots of food, lots of talking, lots of um, adults drinking alcoholic beverages. And uh, so me and the other cousins, we would always find one of the unused bedrooms and use the bed as a wrestling ring, and we would become like Rowdy Roddy Piper and Superfly Jimmy Snuka and right. Hulk Hogan and, and stuff like that. And that was Literally every year that I can remember from like probably, I don't know, four years old to like 11 or 12 years old. Like mm. that's what we did. Um, and uh, yeah, so that was that was my childhood Thanksgivings. And, you know, of course, the you know, the meal, the right. traditional Thanksgiving meals. OK. In, in, uh, in your family as a child, what was the cornerstone uh, food? I mean, besides turkey. Or including the turkey, because turkey oh. was never my cornerstone food. Oh, it's, tur it's always been turkey for me. It's, yeah, turkey by okay. far okay. is the centerpiece. Um, as a child, there, there, be between California and Indiana, two different experiences, Bo mostly, mostly dependent on the number of people available. There were more people in Indiana than there were family members in California. So um, I will base it on the Indiana one, but the California one wasn't much different. It just had fewer people. Mm -hmm. uh, we would all go over to Grandma and Grandpa's house in California or Aunt Debbie and Uncle Al's house in um, in Indiana. Uh, and the adults would mostly sit around talking. A lot of out-of-state people would come back, so there'd be a lot of you know, catching up on times and this and that and joking around with the adults. Um, but most of us kids would sit around and play board games. We didn't do the wrestling thing. We did board games, Pictionary, Monopoly, Battleship, whatever game happened to be there. Uh, one year they turned into Game Boys because we all had Game Boys that year. Um, but we always, and most of us, most of the kids in my generation are about my age. I am one of the, I'm on the lower half of the age side. Um, but my, the oldest cousin in that group is only five years older. So we were all, you know, it was between, between, let's say there was like an eight year spread between the oldest and youngest of our generation. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, and I was like right in the middle ish. Mm -hmm. So we all just played, played games. And the cornerstone for Thanksgiving for us was uh, Grandma's apple pie. You could do what you wanted with the fucking turkey. Like, the turkey was just going to happen. There's going to be some cranberry sauce out of a can. Still look like a can. 
There's gonna be some. <laughs> yeah. There's gonna be some stuffing and some other shit and this and that and whatever. Blah 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 blah. And I was gonna get three plates. It didn't fucking matter who made what. But God damn it, if I didn't have Grandma's apple pie that she only ever made at Thanksgiving, I was fucking fighting somebody. Yeah, like it, that was going. It down. wasn't actually Thanksgiving if you didn't have that. Right. Yeah. Which is, I mean, that's why it's a cornerstone, right? Um, right. Absolutely. Which once Grandma died, that that kind of changed everything. Oh, that that's when Thanksgiving changed for me because she died right after I came in the service. So. Oh, right. Well, right, right after I got married, I should say, um, which would have changed things anyway. But yeah. So that that is that is phase one for me. Yeah. So phase two for me was you know the military phase um i mean there was kind of a a blurring of tradition when i was a young airman when i first came in because i was either you know going back home and doing kind of like what we did before getting together with the the larger extended family um and then a couple of years after i came in the military is when i got married Mm -hmm. and then we very soon after um you know started having kids and um and not long after that i was an nco and when you're an nco you're a supervisor and you've got young airmen living in the dorms, and you start inviting them over to your house for Thanksgiving. That's just kind of what you do. Um, and then that kind of that tradition kind of grew into, you know what? I'm going to invite families as well. Like mm-hmm. if I if I've got a friend or a coworker that um, you know he and his wife, you know his or you know their, their small family or whatever want to come to over to our place, and it kind of became our house, kind of became the Thanksgiving house mm. for. You know, and that kind of uh, went over like two or three bases where like that's I mean, of course, we're putting on a fucking feast for Thanksgiving. And um, that was kind of for probably, I don't know, 10 or 12 years. Like that's my house was the place for Thanksgiving. Mm. Um, So it kind of became a lot like my childhood experience, except not blood relatives, but the family that we made, you know, overseas and whatnot. Right. Um. And that's kind of that was phase two for me was these large gatherings. Um, uh, my phase two ones when, once I got married, Elise and I would invite my coworkers over, usually the single airmen, invite them over, and um, it was re- usually just single airmen, one or two people that would, that would come over and uh, uh, do Thanksgiving with us, and that was kind of it. Like we didn't, we it was really always always really small they'd bring over a dish it was a little potluck kind of thing and um never really big or we'd go over some other, there's really no hard set tradition for my first marriage it was mm-hmm. kind of whatever just worked at the time mm-hmm. um and yeah that's that's how that went but thanksgiving activities like we didn't it, we kind of just sat around and shot the shit like maybe somebody broke out some cards or something but it was really just a lot of bsing and you know i um, yeah yeah no kind of, that's it's kind of boring actually well i mean it's it's boring to talk about probably but it probably wasn't boring at the time because yeah. i've i've done things like that plenty yeah. as well and that's no that's always a good time you have to really know uh some of the people that you work with or i i think part of the problem is about half the thanksgivings that i was with my first wife i was either deployed or working 12s Right. So out of right. the ten years, I was probably deployed or working a twelve-hour shift on Thanksgiving for about five years. I can remember at least three. So that wow. kind of, you know, when the when the patriarch of the newly budded family is not there, thirty to fifty percent of the time, traditions don't typically develop too strongly. Right. That's a good point. Yeah. So. Yeah. So the the new phase, the 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 phase that I'm in now. Um, which is, you know, what we did last week was, um, we will have a, uh, joint Thanksgiving meal. Uh, my, so my family, my ex-wife's family, and then, you know, of course the, we share like half of that family we share because <laughs> they're our kids. Um, so like, so this year Steph and I went over to, uh, my ex's house mm-hmm. and, uh, we had the meal over there and it was a really good time. Um, you know, we're, we're friends with them. I, that's one, one thing that I'm, I'm thankful for is that, um, after the, uh, somewhat tumultuous, uh, I guess, divorce process, um, uh, I, I'm over it and I've recaptured the, uh, 
uh, I guess the, the friendship that, yeah. that, you know, my ex's, uh, relationship and, you know, with me, like the, how that all began, it started as a friendship yep. that developed into something. So we've gotten back to where it all started that we're friends and just, you know, we laugh at the same jokes and, um, you know, and it, but it, the difference now is that, um, uh, we share children, <laughs> right? Um, you share, but, uh, you're sharing, you share, share children, but not a bed. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. Um, but, um, and, and we all get along like our, our, our current significant others get along. We get along with the, with each other. Like it's, it's a good time. It's yeah. a, it's just, it, it's not common, <laughs> right? but, um, it's, it's ours and it's, it's special to us and it works. And, um, that's what we did this year. And we've done that for, uh, for a few years now and it's, it's good. Nice. Um, we typically invite one of my wife's friends or or coworkers over um in any family we have in the area like we she's got a cousin that lives up in Anchorage um and we we you know we invite them over and they sit around and we kind of the the big difference is now I'm there and I'm usually frying turkeys and drinking and watching football <laughs> yeah and the yeah. other people will either join me or they won't but that's what I'm doing today yeah. Um yeah. although I will say we just re- and we might have a new tradition. We didn't have an oven for this Thanksgiving. So my wife said fuck it we're not doing Thanksgiving maybe we'll do it for Christmas. So instead of stressing for 3 days trying to prepare food and everything else for a large family and then spending all of Thanksgiving trying to have all the food ready at about the same time and then sitting around looking at each other like why did we just do all that? Right. Um and then having like 4 days worth of dishes to wash. We ordered pizza on Wednesday and had leftovers on Thursday, and everybody just chilled out for four days. And I got to tell you, like, it's pretty cool. Like, it worked out really nice. Everybody just got four days of bucket. Except for me, because I was installing appliances on Sunday, but yeah. Well, sure, sure. Um, yeah. Yeah. All right. Were, that worked out really nice. I uh, got to watch some football, hang out. The kids, most most of the kids played video games or watched movies. Um, I did a little bit of each with a little bit of everybody. Um, yeah, it was uh, not bad. So it might be our new tradition. Just, just take a weekend off. Yeah. Okay. Because because we're just gonna eat anyway. <laughs> <laughs> But at least now my wife's not stressed out. This is the most relaxing four days off she's ever had, um, which is which was really nice. It benefited the whole family. Yeah, well, I I hope um, I hope everybody had an enjoyable Thanksgiving. What whatever you did for that day, whether it was do absolutely nothing or you put on a feed bag or anything in between, uh, <laughs> as long as you enjoyed it, that's really all that it's, matters. It's not a feed bag, dude. It's a it's a it's a, a conveyor belt like. <laughs> It's hey, one of those right. grain silo, the little twisty things, you know, you're just standing there and they're just dumping shit in the bottom and it's just gr- like gravity feeding, you know, screw feeding into your mouth. That's what I used to do. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of what Thanksgiving is like. That's that's what you do. Except, except not this year. It's just football. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> football, beers, movies, and video games. That's all I did. That was awesome. Yeah. I was at a house that doesn't watch football. Well, they watch football, but not American football. Because he's I, a German, I, but I, I I watch both. But Thanksgiving is American, right? Football. Yeah, exactly. So like, but, the, so the years when when Thanksgiving is at my house, guess what's on television? Yeah, right. Uh, yeah, the, the Cowboys getting wiped, uh, <laughs> like like they should. Right. Yeah. This is I mean, almost a really good week for me. Also, like the Cowboys lost and the Patriots lost, but then San Francisco lost by a. a and, and by the way. Um, San Francisco lost by a last second uh, field goal and dropped from first place to fifth place in the NFC rankings. Or the, yeah, the NFC rankings. Like, ah, that sucks. So that uh, that game of the 49ers against the uh, no 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 the week, pro- week oh before. Uh, yeah Green Bay. Wow, um, San Francisco. Fucking destroyed Green Bay. Yeah. My God. Uh, anyway, this isn't a football <laughs> podcast. <laughs> um, uh, a council of this game cannot be repeated. 
Yeah. Um, so something I'm super excited for that's coming up here in just about three three weeks and some change. The New Year's Eve Streamathon. Yeah, it's dude. Um, um, schedule is about half put together. It is going to be public knowledge <sighs> by the time we air next week. We we have one final hiccup to clear up, and we thought we had Night Attack, and then we found out that the December 31st episode of Night Attack is going to be pre-recorded, but both Brian and Justin want to do something. They just can't commit to long periods of time, so they want to be added yeah. in on something going on, so we got to figure that out. And That is the final piece of the puzzle. And, and the, the problem is, Tuesday's really good time to have Current Geek on, which is going to be on, and uh, uh, Night Attack on, because that's normal on Tuesdays as well, but if the problem is if we do something on the streamathon that doesn't involve night attack, everyone's going to flip over to watch night attack and not pay attention to the streamathon. It's almost like a break for us. But that's not <laughs> what we want. We want them to pay attention to the streamathon and get that going, especially at the time schedule because that's very prime times for people to be donating after they, you know, have done whatever else. Like it's late in the evening. It's um, so we we got to we got to we got to unfuck that schedule conflict thing right there and figure out what we're going to do with Brian and Justin and how, how we're going to get them involved. Um, but that's the only hiccup left. After that, everything else is pretty smooth. It's plug and play and just dropping pieces into places and calling it a day. Yep. Um, that, so if you're wondering, we really wanted to get it out by Tuesday, but we didn't hear back from Bryce until Wednesday, um, yesterday as of this recording. And we, Kent and I need to sit down and kind of muscle through that and figure out what the fuck. So that's where we're at. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So that, that should be resolved very soon. And once it is, uh, the schedule will be out there, especially to you who are already committed to stream. I know that about half of you have not heard from me yet with what your uh, time is going to be. And I know that you're, you're itching for that. Yeah. Uh, please bear with me. You will get that very, very soon. Yeah. We, we, we literally just locked in current geek on Monday. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, so that's that's what's going on there. All right, man. Um hey, uh is there a tweet you've been been uh, enjoying lately? Dude. <laughs> uh something made me laugh today. So there's this guy, uh I don't know how you say his name. I don't know if it's John Boys or John Bois or something like that. Is it's J O N underscore B O I S over there on Twitter. He tweeted today. I have no idea who Donald Trump is, and I refuse to look him up. <laughs> I laughed my ass off at just the very idea of like w how what a wonderful life that person would have. <laughs> I've never heard of Donald Trump, and uh, yeah. that's not that's not even a partisan thing. I'm saying if you have never even heard of Donald Trump, like you are missing out on so much of the world's misery and I adore you and, and the, the life that you're probably living <laughs> like, that sounds great. Yeah. Um, what about I'm totally going partisan. Uh, Sarah Beatty uh, at Nacho Sarah on uh, Twitter tweeted, if you're missing your mentally impaired racist as fuck grandpa during the holidays, just turn on the TV. He's in charge of the country. so good you can't comment on shit but i can tell you <laughs> that is so fucking good god uh, yeah the the um the oft mentioned thanksgiving tradition of your racist uncle mm. um, there's always there's always one there's always one racist at the uh large yep. thanksgiving gatherings yep so uh oh. you can find me on twitter at ethan kane e-t-h-a-n-c-a-i-n-e -E. kent they can find you at rm underscore del noche D E L N O C H E. That's correct. Okay. You can find the show at Ritual Misery. <laughs> <on Twitter. laughs> we would really love it if you joined our conversation over on Discord, though. Bit.ly slash RMP Discord. And you can find all these links and more ways to support the show at ritualmisery.com. Thank you so much to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use your music and we are live every thursday at 7 p.m pacific and time at club.tv and twitch.tv slash ritual misery thank you for listening for kent for you for me and for all those who don't listen hope thanksgiving was awesome and this has been your post thanksgiving ritual misery podcast see ya All right.
T U A L M I S E L Y. Yeah, I still don't know why it's not playing back, but whatever. Mm. They hear it out there. We don't hear it. It's whatever. Yeah, it's super weird. Yeah. 